back in action today in the studio talking to maybe the third bro in the banking bros community. We'll see coming up next. Welcome back to the Cash Compound Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, Jay Du on the microphone and in studio today, a very special guest, very excited about, couple months in the making, we've got Uncle Willie Coleman in the building. <laughs> Willie, say hey to everybody and What's thanks for being on? here, man. What's going on? Thanks for having me, Jay Du. Yeah, man. It, man. Real pumped about what you're doing and what we're already doing together yes. and the first introduction of that system and money-making powerhouse deal that we're getting into for our community's opportunity moving forward. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we do on this podcast is we talk through cracking the code to cash flow, and now we're talking about private money deals, real estate with my man, Willie. So, Willie, give us a little bit of your background, my friend. You're yeah. in real estate. You're yeah. taking our money, but uh, how did you get to this place? Man, it's been a journey. It has been a journey. Um, so, again, thanks for having me, J.D. Yeah, I really man. appreciate it, man. Um, but... How are we here today? Um, long story short, uh, my parents, they were in real estate okay. and uh, still are actually. And um, they, they, these are folks that best people in the world. At the end of the day, they, uh, long story short, they were in the Navy, anal, anal people, always did things the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of transpired to me and my siblings. And so um, coming from a family of, again, everything has to be a certain way. Growing up in that, um, you know, they were... In the Navy, got out, ended up. My mom always had that design eye, and my dad, he actually used to be a builder back okay. in Alabama. Got it. And so, um, over the years, you know, my family members, friends, they would always ask for, "Hey, can you do this for us? Can you renovate the bathroom? Can you do this or the other?" And I just remember I was probably, you know, between the age of eight and you know, thirteen. That was probably again what they would always be asked to do. And they've always had businesses, and they've always mm -hmm. been entrepreneur minded. Okay. Yep. Uh, but then they kind of started doing construction stuff for for our friends and family. And uh, I was homeschooled. So my mom, she gave me the assignment, said, you know, after school, it's like she knew what I was doing. And it's like, hey, you're going to work. Yeah, right? So right. I, I okay. basically worked in the family business, which was, yeah. you know, doing whatever it took to to make it happen. Um, and so they would help our, our family members and friends out. And, um, you know, long story short, that, I think that's when I started kind of really figuring out what, what I liked and didn't like in terms of what did I want to do with my life, right? Like at that age, right, you, you, you I mean, again, I, I was probably 13 years old and I was able to, um, at that age, I mean, I had done drywall on a house. I've landscaped a house. I put roof on a house. I've done electrical, plumbing, you name it. Essentially, I could build a house by the time I was 15 years old. Wow. I knew the yeah. process of right. how does okay. this happen. And so um, fast forward a couple of years, I'm 15. Uh, they're kind of getting their business rolling, truly making it a business versus the hobby side. Stopped doing renovations for people, and they started buying houses. Okay. Um, so right here in, in, in South Carolina, they would, you know, they found a house, fixed up, resold it. Right. We would do the work on our houses, on their mm -hmm. houses. Right. Um, and me and my brothers, we would also, we'd all be there. Right. And they were like, okay, we need to really make this a business. They start subbing stuff out. Um, started kind of going to meetups, starting to get connected in the community, understanding um, how to really play the game. Right. And so they would bring me along, right? So I'm 14, 15 years old. I'm going to Korea meeting, right? Which is basically just an organization of real estate people, um, okay, across the country. So this is real homeschooled here, super <laughs> nerds out here. Yeah. Why is this kid? What is? Why doesn't this kid play ball like everybody else? Yeah, or yeah. Xbox, right, right, right. right. Um, and I, I did sometimes, but again, it was just I was focused. So anyway, so I would, I would go to uh, to these meetings with them, and I heard this concept of host selling real estate. Mm -hmm. I was like, huh. Uh, one of the things I, I missed in that whole timeline of me working with them, I would always be just the entrepreneur hustler mindset, which was like, like on these houses, they're, they're bad houses, but some things can be salvaged. So mm -hmm. I would like literally like the toilets, the cabinets, you name it, instead of just demoing and throwing them in the dumpster, I would carefully take them down and then, you know, I'd put them up on offer up Craigslist and yeah. just, I mean, dude, I, I kid you not. I don't say this to gloat. It's just a reality. Like I, I, I think I was making like two to $3,000 a month as a, 14, 15 year right. old. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's just that like, Xbox comment. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, I, I had fun with the Xbox, but it wasn't my main focus for sure. Um, so, so as, as we go along that, I, I heard host selling real estate. It's just connecting the buyer and what host selling is. Again, I know we're not really, you know, on a Pacific real estate podcast right now, but just a brief synopsis. It's finding 
somebody that wants a distressed property, a cash buyer, the HGTV guy that wants to renovate the house, a.k.a. my parents, mm-hmm. right? All right. Um, finding that guy and then connecting them with a distressed actual home. That's something that needs work, right? It might be somebody that's, you know, that needs a solution behind on payments, um, taxes. They lost the house. Whatever it is, we come in, find that asset, get it under contract, and then find a cash buyer, assign our rights to the contract, and then we make a fee in between. So – I started wholesaling at 15 years old. Couldn't even sign contracts because you can't buy a house if you're not 18, right? Right. So I had to start an LLC with my brother to where he was actually signing the deals and I'd pay him like a little marketing fee and, you know, I would host. So anyway, long story short, I wholesaled a good, I don't know, by the time I was 18, I think we hit um, probably 25, 30 deals. Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah. And I was like, you know, college. That, that no, I I you know I'm not in love. I was not in love with wholesaling. It was not oh this is sexy or anything like that because it's a grind, right? You are constantly competing with a gajillion other people that are looking for these deals, and um you you're just it's a grind, right? It's not it's nothing easy. That's for sure. I don't want want to want to want to come across that way. But long story short, um did those wholesale deals. I'm like I'm not going to college. I would probably lose money if I went to college. Sure, right. And um, at 17 years old, I actually. Bought my first rental. Okay. Um, now this was just you, or you're in with your family? No, at this all? is just me. Okay. So this is when I again I started my my own company at seventeen or at fifteen. Okay. Um, bought my then we were wholesaling, and then I was like, you know what? I'm giving up a little bit too much of the deal here. Like I might as well take some of this stuff down because again at that point I was like, okay, getting some money up here, and again I don't believe in using. And I'm sure we'll get into this. I don't believe in using your own money for your your own deals because there's too much money in this world to do that. But at the time, like, I was like, you know, the traditional way of thinking. I'm sure. like, I have money now. Right. Let, me, let me take down some deals. Yeah. And so at 17, I bought my first deal personally. Okay. Um, and I still work with my parents now. Like, we do partnerships and stuff like that. And Because, um, again, like, my mom, she is the, she is the best designer you, you could find, right? My dad, just the knowledge. And just, again, they, they have the same thought process of perfection, right? Mm-hmm. And so, anyway, uh, we, uh, we bought that first deal. Or I bought that first deal at 17. Didn't go to college and was like, you know what? Again, I still at the time I was not in love with real estate, but it was like, you know what? You know, although I'm not in love, I'm really good and I don't know what I want to do, so might as well do something that is right. working, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from the, the age of 18, I'm 22 years old now. Uh, been able to build up a pretty decent real portfolio here in the upstate of South Carolina. Um, where we're now we do short term rentals, mid term rentals, long term rentals, and um, we are now branching into the luxury side of there we go. Yeah. Yes, man, I love it. So I'm there's so many things to unpack in there. Uh, one of the things is I've heard recently don't follow your passion mm. because a lot of times your passion is not going to be perfected enough for you to actually be in business around your passion. So here's where I want to connect it to what you just said. You're getting to of age, 17, 18, 19 years old, thinking right. about maybe transitioning. You've done things because you know it with your family, right. but am I going to do this or mm-hmm. am I not? I mean, mm-hmm. I kind of get okay. And what I'm starting to see here is you don't follow your passion, but your skills start to become your passion because you realize you're good at it. And you're like, wait a minute. It's not your passion to start off with, but once you acquire some skills and get better and better at it, you're like, well... What else am I passionate about? Because I'm actually learning and getting better in that area. So, well, break that down for me. Does that resonate with you or say, no, 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 no. I should be out here playing (laughs) piano or traveling with, uh, you know, whatever the circus. Or you're like, no, no, no. What I've learned is actually as I got better, Mm -hmm. I became more passionate about these things. Dude, so you're preaching to the choir because I've been thinking a lot about this lately. And it's like, even now, right right, at 22, you know, I I still don't know if this is, you know, I, I do other things besides real estate. Like I'm, I'm an angel investor and some other things. My brother's in tech, so I'm connected to that world as well. Yep. Um, but uh, obviously, my every day it's real estate, um, and I think, you know, people always say, "Oh, do what you like." You said, "Do what you're passionate about." Da 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 da. And that makes sense. I'm, I'm not. Don't live a life that you're miserable. Right, right. Of course. But at the same time, you got to give up what you want most. Um, you know, like don't, or I should say this: don't give up what you want most for what you want in the moment. Yes. Okay. You know right. what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, so like to do. So, like, like I said in a minute ago, I'm going into luxury real estate. Yeah. All the years of physically swinging that hammer and physically getting that verbal abuse from sellers that would curse me out when I would cold call people and when I would, you know, cold call thousands of people and just hear no, 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 
and finally got that yes, although the yes was, oh, it's just a nice little single family home that, you know, is not a big deal. Maybe that you you did three, four, five months of work and you only made, you know, two thousand dollars. You thought you're going to make twenty thousand. Right. 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 That stuff hurts and it can. Right. Right. But at the end of the day, those little deals and those little things get you closer to, like you said, it, it allows you to find what you're passionate about. And what I think for me what that did, that building, that stepping stone, it prepared me and put me in a position to get me, one, ready for where I'm going, and two, right. it was just those those assets that I still own helped me acquire and, and do what I'm doing with these bigger assets. Love so it's it. just like, Love it's it. crazy when you can start with the end in mind yeah. and stay focused on that. All this other stuff about, oh, yeah, like, again, like, I like to golf, I like to travel, like, but, dude, like, I for the first time, like, two weeks ago, I finally took a trip, but I haven't been on vacation in probably four or five years. Right. It's just been, <clears throat> stay on it. I love it, man. So uh, I love what you're saying here, and there's so many prizes along the way, which was actually paychecks that helped you get to the place you are now because this type of passion work now started out as a well a problem at the beginning right <laughs> so i'm gonna keep it in the p world here because uh-huh. i'm baptist i'm always saying that so I'm, i'll see if i can alliterate we started out with some problems on these projects yeah. Right. But you learn and then these checks come in and now you have a passion because also what you've learned pays money. Hmm. Sometimes out there, there's a lot of great hobbies out there and go ahead and keep them. Right. Traveling normally costs money. Right. (laughs) Most of us aren't getting paid to do that. But we've gotten checks along the way while we're doing these projects Mm -hmm. to get to where you want to go now. But here's the thing. You've talked about this like it was some long journey. Yeah. But you (laughs) you already played your cards, man. Twenty two years old. 22 years young. There ain't nothing under your belt yet except a bunch of knowledge because it ain't time. It ain't time yet. So tell us the difference you see by some of your uh, friends as you're coming up or the people in your age range. They're probably not focused on the same things you're focused on. You know, we get told all the time around here, the banking bros kind of moniker that Jonah and I, my brother, kind of have. Like, man, seeing some young brothers out there doing the work and figuring and teaching and trying to reach out to people. Hey, there's a better way to get you where you want to go. There are better tools and vehicles. There are better partnerships we can be doing to get us to where we want to go. That's not something I'm normally seeing in somebody your age, man. Speak to that. Absolutely. I think it all goes back to, like, almost like mindset in a way, right? Like Uh mindset and what drives you, right? you know? Because, like, what's the point, right? Why are you working so hard? Why are you... Why do you like? I don't. You know, some people work because they have to to, to eat, right? Well, of like, course. I'm a kid. Right. I don't have to do anything. I can just, you know, do my school and chill at home. Which, again, like I, I jokingly say, I was get to work earlier, but it's like, no, I had an option, right? I wasn't <laughs> forced to work. But there was always uh, something in. There's always been something in me to say, you know, don't be, don't just settle for what's accepted for in society, or don't just be, don't just be good enough, right? Like I, I, and again, it goes back to my family and again, how, how they think, I think, and that's been instilled in me, but it's like, my mindset has been, look, you have an opportunity to be like, you're good at this, right? Like, I didn't know, I didn't know what I was good at. At 12, when I was swinging a hammer, I didn't know sure, I would, I would right. end up being good at talking to sellers yeah. and raising money and, and dealing. And with also sometimes and- good at something like that is going to be in comparison relationship to maybe the next person. So at 12, 13, 14, 15, you don't even know if you're good. <laughs> right. Well, if you are good, you wouldn't know. Exactly. Because how would, I don't have enough life experience or people around me to yeah. even know that I'm good. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. So for me... I was, do know I got cussed out on the phone right, today, right. Right. but I didn't know I was... Hey, that's normal, but you still solved the problem, yes. overcame the obstacle, and moved forward. A lot of people don't have that skill. They don't, don't use it. that. Yeah. Well, and, and it's just like, the, the reality is, like what I do in real estate, but what you do in general, whatever anybody wants to do, and you hear it all the time, like, you know, if you set your mind to it, you can do it, this, that, the other. But the reality is that's true. If you really just say, I want this, and it, the end in mind, the end is I want to buy a house. I want to flip a house. I want to build a portfolio. I don't want to end up at a job. For me at that age, I was like, you know, I don't really want to go work for somebody. I never, you know, again, part of the reason I was probably homeschooled was like I never – was able to like go with the flow. I was always like sure, going against sure. the grain on things. But at the same time, it sounds yeah. as though it's not that you are adamantly against getting a job. Oh, it absolutely was just, not. Right, right. You just absolutely were like, not. this is my That's life. That's just what I normal. want. Yeah, but yeah. 
I, I don't I'm not actually mad at anybody out no. in the world. I don't think the man is out there taking advantage of me at my workplace because you never had one. You just say, well, this is what we do exactly. as a family, and this exactly. is exactly it was just the next call I need to make. Mm-hmm. I just don't know any different. Yeah, yeah. and because and you're, you're exactly right. Like I have I have two other siblings, and they they're in completely different paths. Like one yeah. of my brother, he is an entrepreneur, and he did end up starting a tech company that's doing very very well. And my other brother, he's into gaming. Right, yeah. and that's okay. what he does. He's right. a, a streamer. He, he, yeah. he, right, that's what he wants to do. Yeah. Um, you know, and for me, it was just like you know, what? I just I, again, I would play golf this and that, but it's like I don't know what I want to do, but I know I'm good at this, and I'm driven to succeed at it. Mm-hmm. So let's just go. Let's do yeah. it. You know, the mindset was again, it doesn't matter all the no's. The end in mind is make it happen and keep it moving. That's what my mom always used to say, or she still says, keep it moving on to the next. Keep it moving. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that transitions us now into our quote of the week. Charlie Tremendous Jones. Some of you know that name out there as being a speaker in the last century, and a lot of stories were told in and around this man's life. Charlie Tremendous Jones says, You will be the same person in five years as you are today, except for the people you meet and the books you read. So I have a new friend because of some people that I met. And they introduced me to this great guy, Willie Coleman. However, I want to know about some books. Are you a yeah. reader, sir? Yeah. I, I'm, we're going to talk about uh-huh. the connections and the people and the networking. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what we're good at. But we don't always dive into a new relationship and ask, hey, man, you reading anything? Can you mm-hmm. recommend anything? What is What has been on your mind? What what yeah. pages have, have permeated your brain? So uh, am I a reader? No. <laughs> um, I, I, I honestly am not. But... I'm a very visual person. Okay. I'm a very, if I hear it, if I hear it a couple more times, I get it. Got it. So I'm really big on Audible. Um, yeah. So oh, I love you, Audible. You know, I'm really big on I get them in these days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know the deal. You run yeah. around the car, oh, yeah. go around the city. Yeah. Um, and so recently, I, I went back to a book that I read. at the, the first time I read this book, I was 16. It's a book called Never Split the Difference by okay. Chris Voss. Yes, I've heard of it. But I've um, not actually gotten into that one. A lot of people mention it. Dude, so I'm tell telling Tell me about you. it. So that book, it, it, it's it, Chris Voss, he is a former uh, FBI negotiator. Yes. And he goes over in that book just, it's not necessarily just about negotiate and how do you get a deal on this or the other. It's just really life skills of how do you get what you want, mm. right? Like everything's a negotiation, everything. You know, I, I went, uh, when you're at the restaurant, when you're at the drive, wherever, everything you do in life is a negotiation to kind of get what you want, right? Yep, okay. And so that book, I read it, I think I was like 16 for the first time, and it really helped me with just negotiating with sellers and buyers and whatever I was doing at the time. But I'm reading it actually again right now because – there's just things on there. Like, how do you, again, get what you want in the most polite way of also keeping in mind the other party's goal, right? So truly starting with how does this make sense for all of us? What are your goals? And yep. how can we make it make sense for everybody? And not just what's in it for me. Because negotiating is always like, well, how do you get what you want by, you know, Stomping taking on it someone. away from yes. the other person? Yeah, right, right. And that book really yes. opens your eyes of how do we make this a win-win and truly – believe that right and that you know comes down to the person and things like that but uh but yeah that's definitely my top book because again it's just it helped me so much even just like a recent raise i did and just a couple other things it's nothing crazy it's just basic principles of starting with the other person's goal love it man okay ladies and gentlemen we hope you're ready let's get into a deal and an overview of what you're normally doing and how we have recently started to work together you came to us a couple. Now, how we meet first, I guess. Yeah, yeah, the networking side is we met because I was asked to speak. Most people in this community actually know me as a speaker <laughs> in this community outside of the world of finance and financial fitness and money and lend anything like that. However, people inside the cash compound community, because we're spread all over the country, don't know me in that world at all. So I got asked by some friends of ours that were mutual, hey, can you open and introduce and hype everybody up at a real estate meetup event, a networking event that you probably have in your town? But uh, we met at that event. Yes. And I'm also in a tangential and complimentary space is what I was trying to tell these guys. Hey, I not only can hype you up, but I actually have some keys and some clues Mm -hmm. to help us do business together. So can I bring that? And I did bring that. We met after one of those events in the networking portion. And um, I said, hey, I'm a guy who's looking for opportunities to partner and to fund deals. So 
then this man came back with a deal. So tell me oh, what yeah. you're normally doing, and oh, we'll yeah. get into a little bit about the project we have sure. on the ground right now. Sure. So um, I think you know you guys got the gist of like obviously I'm an investor. Uh, we buy properties to mainly try to hold them, right? We want to hold as much as possible. But you know we buy them, fix them up. Sometimes we sell them. Sometimes we hold them. Uh, and then in those holds, they become whatever rental that makes sense for that deal. But we're buying these discounted assets, and they're discounted because again they need a bunch of work. There's a situation usually tied to that. So and and we're in the single family space focused mainly right now. Um, and so we're buying them. We the way we buy them, like I mentioned, I don't use any of my money. I I think I put maybe money into one deal. Okay, I've done God knows how many deals, but uh, you know. So the reality is, we bought the way we buy these is we raise money, right? And we raise money from these are houses don't qualify for traditional financing. These are houses with the roof falling in and all types of problems, right? right. Yep. They're not going to qualify for traditional financing. Also, I'm pretty dang young, right? Personally, like you know, I think when the when I bought my first house, I couldn't even qualify for a mortgage because can't get a mortgage at 17, right? So right. Yeah. had to get creative, right? And so, uh, you know, a lot of times people don't realize the side of real estate because, again, it, all that's taught is you go to the bank, you provide your W-2, you do this, blah, 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 blah. And so what we do is we we go in and we say, all right, with the acquisition price, and I'll just throw out some numbers here, is $50,000, okay? That's the acquisition price for the asset. Uh, we examine it, you know, um, we look at it with our contractors, and we say, hey, it needs a good... 50 and work, right? All right, so it needs, will be all in when it's all set and done at 100. Okay. Well, the house could probably sell at 200,000. Mm-hmm. Boom, great. So you got $100,000 in margin. Yep. Um, all in at 50%. We take that deal, we present it, we, you know, nothing crazy, nothing too fancy. We put together the photos on like a Google Drive and we, we put together information in an email and we basically send to individuals um, that have money. <laughs> Uh, individuals that have money in the retirement account, individuals that have money that they've just worked for over the years or wherever. It doesn't matter where they get their money from as right. long as it's good money, right? Right. Um, well, we, as long as we think it's good money. We don't know where they're yeah. getting money. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, so we present the deal and we say, hey, Mr. Investor. Um, and, again, I'm not I'm not a financial advisor. I'm nothing of the sense of giving advice here. I'm just telling you what we do. But um, the point is we present the deal and we say, hey, this is the deal. Um this is what we want to do. This is our intention with the, with the deal. It's going to take about three months to renovate it. And we're allotting, probably we're estimating another three months to sell, in and out in six months. Uh, but we promise, and we're willing to sign this, we mm-hmm. will give you a note and mortgage mm-hmm. tied to the property to say, you know, Willie Coleman and LLC agrees to pay you back. They We asked them for the purchase money and the rehab money, so all $100,000 yep. for them to fund it. And yep. typically, you know, we're, we're giving out around 10% APR. And we present that to the lender, and um, you know, basically, they get that known mortgage. We both sign. Um, an attorney does all the paperwork. Um, their 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 uh, d- their security, their documentation is filed with the county, so it's on record. Yep. I could not sell the house without them. Their position right. is basically like a Wells Fargo. They're yep. the bank. Right. Um, oh, I'm liking it. Yeah. Starting to warm up. Yeah. You guys figuring it out now? Yeah. Especially our new people who don't understand how yeah. this process can work. Yeah. So, so you're able to really provide true security. Right. And on that promissory note, we are we are giving you a guaranteed return. Yes. I have to pay you that money. Right. And that note says, if I don't, you get the asset back. Right. If I don't pay you back that money, meaning through a sell or refinance of that property. Yep. You literally are entitled to take the property right back from me at so, the end of the term. There's two things I want to dive into there. Sure. Number one is most people don't understand that contract and notes, as we're saying here, mortgage, lending, those deals, they don't understand that they can say whatever the two parties agree on. A lot of people assume that that traditional way that Wells Fargo, B of A, or Truist, whoever, yeah. PNC told them is the only way to do a deal. Now and you're telling me we've got some options there. We can do it. Options. We can do a lot of different things. We can do a lot of different things. You yeah. know, it's 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 the the guys that have really been winning in this space and you know you know, you hear oh financial freedom through real estate, oh do it with no money. It's all bull crap in a way. Like you're gonna need money, you're going to need you're gonna need a path to get there, but how do you how do you really get there, right? It's like it's so it, it's it's not easy, but it is simple. When you really break it down, and you there say, oh, yeah. there are people that have money just sitting in an account. I mean, it's ridiculous. Wells sure. Fargo, these guys are paying you nothing. Less than 1% right. APR a year. Terrible. Right. And you get you get somebody that you trust, that you like the vibe, you like the vision, you like what they're doing with these projects, and you say, I can put my money in real estate. Right. 
literally not do it lifting a finger collaterally backed collaterally asset backed. somebody else knows the deal and i can provide be the funding source the bank i can loan or lend the money love it okay there was two things yes. number one was the note and the other uh maybe and it was mortgage. this it was the idea that when we get into the investment that everyone assumes that oh well doing a deal with a private entity is risky automatically yeah yeah that's what they that's always the assumption right yeah and I, and I get it right sure. you, okay. you, traditionally you'd say oh like let's just go invest in Grant Cardone's fund or do and again all that stuff is great again sure. I, I don't yep. know I'm not endorsing anybody I'm just saying you could go hey how do we go find a big fund and blah 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 nothing wrong with that the thing is it's like and everybody's different right some sure. people are super risky this or the other um, like they. They don't care. They just want to put their money somewhere. For me, like I actually do private money loans myself. Right. So, so I, I'm speaking from the perspective not just from somebody that raises money, but somebody that actually has given someone else money. Um, and so, for me, the way I look at it is like, well, um, you know, an individual, especially investing locally. Something I know, I'm not. I'm not that smart, guys. Like I, I just know how to figure stuff out and connect right. the dots. Right. And for me, it's like I like to invest in people I know, like, and trust. Of course, because it just feels right. I go yeah. off of vibes. You know, people are always like, oh, the numbers and this. It's like when you kind of take all that out of it, and and because all of it's risky, it's right. all risky. Right. You've you got know? to. You've got to. They, I mean, they both go together, yeah, hand in sure. hand. Absolutely. We are going to put it on the paperwork. There's going to be mm-hmm. notes. There's going to be clauses in those things, and you can Absolutely. have an attorney look at that type Absolutely. of stuff. Many people like yourself are already providing, in most cases, eighty to a hundred percent of that note paperwork. Anyway, it's like, mm-hmm. hey, we've got it, and yep. it says X Y Z. Does that work for you? Exactly. Do these terms and conditions work for you? It's not just price; it's the terms and conditions that go along mm-hmm. with it. We've got property. You can come out and look at it if you do something locally, and right. I did. Um, but at the same time, hey, we need to develop a little bit of a relationship here because if it if and when it does work, wouldn't we keep that investment? option open exactly and i think a lot of people are just under educated in that environment when they do have funds that are sitting around that they could deploy and sometimes you sometimes it's even even the opposite sometimes people are over educated oh sure you know sure, sometimes yeah. that's that's another hindering right uh-huh. uh, situation you get people I, I mean i know guys with millions of dollars in, in the bank account they just they can't get past the the they they think so much and so analytical and da 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 and don't get me wrong do your due diligence Trust, but verify. Oh, sure. Right? Yeah. Verify everything. Like you said, there's a note in mortgage, and we're yeah, going to look paperwork. at this. There's get, paperwork. Get an attorney if you want. I advise everybody. Get you an attorney. Let your attorney represent you. That way, you're, whatever. Protect yourself. I'm yeah. not saying don't protect yourself, but sometimes people just they take it too extreme, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, the way I raise money is I, I, you know, I've gotten to a point where I can just send a text and say, hey, man, I need 150 grand. Yeah, can you 100%. fund it on Monday? Right? Oh, this is the other part that uh-huh. that triggered it. The sure. other thing I wanted to mention outside of we're not sure about h- how to do it, what the notes say, yes. is it risky? True or false, the best deals that exist out there are never posted. They're always through some low text message. The best deals are always on the inside. Always. Always on the it inside. Is a fact. <laughs> if you are not connected, if you're not networking, Man. if you don't have that green light and the door open, you'll never get the best deals. The best ones are always on the inside. Always. If you see it advertised, if it's on TV, if it's on a street sign on the corner because somebody put stakes in the ground, you are too late for the best deal correct it doesn't mean that you can't do a deal doesn't mean that there won't be opportunities it means that the best deal is gone because the best ones come from the people you already know like and trust 100 percent. yeah okay i love it okay let's transition now to a fan follow of the week thank you for following on youtube we've got jai g who just followed us recently so we appreciate you girl doing your thing out there and getting a look inside behind the curtain of the Cash Compound and the Banking Bros. Thank you for following our uh, YouTube series that we got out mm-hmm. there. We got so many. We're adding new stuff. Hopefully, if you're learning this in the summer of 2023, you start to see our new movie reviews about uh-huh. money. So we got a little bit of that coming. But now let's talk a little bit about what the people want to know, like Jai G out there. Um, how can they get involved? Tell us a yeah. some of the specifics first on the deal we actually are doing sure. in our town. And then is there opportunity for people to get involved in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I am. Um, so to unpack that, you know, the, the deal that we're doing. Yeah. Uh, man, on the inside, I got a text message. Got a, send up a text. Hey, right? can I come over and show you a little something? I said, yes, you can. All right. <laughs> yes. Um, and so 
Long story short, like I said, guys, I'm in the single family space. I've done a lot over the the past few years, a lot of renovations, a lot of extensive rehabs. And the way I do my renovations, just to back up for a second, I'm still very, you know, very keeping the family driven. Um, So it's great. I'm able to actually partner with my parents. So, again, I find the asset. You know, I raise all the money, uh, put together the vision. um, And I'm involved in A to Z. But my mom, she does all of our design. It's beautiful. My dad, like I said, he had that background in building. So it just works beautifully. And we do a little partnership. That's on, that's on my side. But the point is, I found this deal. And um, right downtown Greenville, how did I get the deal? Got a text there from you a buddy. Go. See? <laughs> got a text from a buddy. And he actually was giving up the deal. He said, you know what? Hey, Willie, you know, I got this got this deal. It's downtown Greenville. I'm not really sure on the numbers because the guy wanted a ton of money. Okay. Well, he wanted a yep. ton of money for this yep. little two-bedroom house. Right. Now, this is a distressed property at the time. It is a distressed property. Yep. Okay. You know, situation, and I believe, you know, the homeowner had some legal issues. And, and again, he needed a lot of help. And so, but he needed a lot of money. Or yeah. He wanted a lot. Okay. So, got it. Anyway, he hit me up. He said, Willie, what do you think about this? Because, again, I'm really into higher margin deals, deals that we can – you know, go crazy on all of our deals. We take them down, all of our uh, properties, we take them down to the studs. We don't do anything halfway. So my expectation in, in, in life and business and everything is do things the right way, do it to a way where, you know, um, 50 years from now, people are like, yeah, I bought my house from Willie Coleman and they're proud and they have a smile on their face. Right. Um, and so very, very, you know, that, that, that kind of conveys throughout. And unfortunately, you know, to have that type of mindset and process, I put a lot of money to these properties. Yeah, I can it's tell. not, I can tell. it's not a, oh, like we're, we're not doing $50,000 rehab anymore. I'll say that. And so, um, long story short, the gentleman uh, that reached out to me, a buddy of mine, he was not sure on the deal because it was su- such a high price point. I came in, I said, dude, don't worry about that. That location, just get under contract. I promise you, I don't, I don't care about the number there. We'll buy it. And so got under contract. We bought this deal in January. Fast forward a little bit. I had no idea what we were going to do. I bought it, probably paid way too much for it at the time. And because, uh, again, the asset that sat there just didn't make sense. And so, um, you know, I was like, you know, I just want it for the location and we'll figure it out later. Like, let's just acquire it. So raise some money. Was it, had enough to acquire the property. That's it. Then February comes along. I get in touch with my architect. I work hand in hand with the architect myself. We're putting together the plans for the we decided, apologies, I skipped ahead a little bit. We decided to end up tearing down the actual structure that was on the property and just start over. That was the plan. And so anyway, February comes around, me with the architect, we start putting together the house. Just boom, boom, boom. And the idea here was just, you know, we were leading with perfection, but um, the idea was kind of just modern, but, you know, we're still figuring out the details. So fast forward all the way to, I think, the end of March, early April, we finished the plans the style ended up being European, L.A. mixed with just something quite different, all with combined with the warmth of the South. The warmth of the South. Yeah, because okay. I think Got that's it. what gets missed sometimes. Like, all right. You still right. want to be give, give a nod to where you're at, right? Don't, <laughs> okay. Oh, we're in L.A. Like, okay. Don't, okay. You know, but no. So all that mixed together with, with the warmth. And um, and so anyway, we put together some magic, man. Me and my architect, um, shout out to Justin. Uh, Justin and I, we put together those plans. Help from my mom, of course, with her design eye. Yep. With, how yep. does this bed need to lay? Like, you know, right. people just don't think about the little things. Like, right. Right. it's all so important. There's so many details when it comes to new builds, right? It's just like, there's so many things you could do or whatever. And so we ended up putting together this house. I think I initially, uh, when I reached out to you, we were like, yeah, we're going to raise a good, like, six, 700K. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. This was back in March, April, I think. And, um, uh, or no, this was right before we finished the plans. And so then when we finished the plans, we're like, uh-oh, uh, we went a little big here. Yep, yep. <laughs> so we, we ended up drawing like this six-bedroom, six-bath house that, that that's like 5,300 square feet. Um, and we ended up putting some features in there that I can't give away too much. I think some people need to stay tuned. All uh, right. But some right. features that Greenville hasn't quite seen before. I'll just say that. So we now ended up raising, I, I just closed last week. We raised $1.5 million. There we go. Uh, for this deal. Big money. And, uh, yeah. So like Willie said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, us over here on our side at the Cash Compound, we decided that several a couple of years ago that we were going to be involved in private money deals. Real estate was a great option for us, and we said, hey, if we're going to deploy 
our pools of capital that we now have and access to, where would we deploy it? Banks don't make money by leaving the dollars sitting. Money has got to flow. And we found these opportunities for flowing our money, becoming the bank, and a financing option for other people to do whatever it was. We just thought real estate would be great for us. So that's what we're doing. And very soon, ladies and gentlemen, inside of our Cash Compound course library, we're going to start breaking down some of these deals and the opportunities for you all to be involved in these options as well. So many of you are learning the power of leveraging your ever increasing asset at a moment at a text message, at a text message from a yeah. friend. So over the course of your growth um, of your asset and your uh, policies, you're going to be able to be involved in these as well should you want to. So that's what uh, we're excited about. It's kind of an introduction of those opportunities with several partners that we're doing deals with already. So we thank you so much, Willie, for being in Absolutely. studio, man. Absolutely. One more thing. Uh, where can people find you? Where can we follow you as we start to, you know, test the waters here and figure out what's going on before we kind of introduce everybody into maybe, hopefully, very soon, a formal opportunity. But yeah, where can so um, I'm really, um, <laughs> you can follow me and find me on Instagram, uh, Willie.Coleman. Um, so find me there and, uh, by all means, let's connect. We're hiring right now. We're looking for some ops assistance. We're looking for a lot of crazy things. We're at a pivotal point in our business and, um, would love to, love to connect in any way I can and add some value to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what to do. We'll talk to you again soon.